Okay, for today's story time, 10 minute read, we're gonna be working on fluency and accuracy. We're gonna start at the end of page 72 because I did not get to finish this yesterday. Let's begin. Amadou Diallo, on February 4th, 1999, four plain clothes, not in uniform, police officers fired 41 shots at Amadou Diallo as he stood in the doorway of his Bronx, New York home. 19 bullets struck Diallo, who was only 22 years old. The young man, a West African immigrant, was unarmed and had no criminal record. He died at the scene. The officers who shot Diallo claimed he fit the description of a criminal they were looking for. A police review cleared the officers of any wrongdoing. The killing led to street demonstrations and calls for reform. Protesters saw the incident as evidence of excessive police violence and unfair targeting of African Americans. During a grand jury hearing, no charges were brought against the officers. Diallo's family sued the city and settled for $3 million. His mother used part of the settlement to establish a college scholarship fund in her son's name. Black is beautiful, 10, 25, 97 million women march, October the 16th, 1995, the million man march. Now let's get into the artists of note, page 74, get to know the black arts movement. The black arts movement was started in the 1960s around the same time that some civil rights activists began to promote the idea of black power. Black arts writers and other creative artists spoke directly to the interests and concerns of black Americans. They called for new reforms of expression, new forms of expression that reflected African American history and culture. In their poems, plays, novels, and essays, they often used the language and rhythm of everyday speech found in black communities. Writers who were part of this movement included the poet Sonia Sanchez and the playwright Ed Bullens. Amiri Baraka, a writer and activist, may be the best known member of this group. With writer Larry Neal, he edited Black Fire, a collection of writings devoted to the issues of the day. Charles Gordon. In 1970, Charles Gordon became the first African-American playwright to win a Pulitzer Prize for drama. No place to be somebody told the story of a New York City restaurant owner and his best friend, a struggling actor. The show was Gordon's first major work as a playwright. It was first staged at the Public Theater in New York before moving on to Broadway. Born in Cleveland, Ohio and raised in Elkhart, Indiana, Gordon was also an actor and director. Toward the end of his career, he was a professor of English at Texas A&M University for eight years until his death in 1995. The Birth of Hip Hop. Jamaican-born Clive Campbell moved to the Bronx in New York City in 1967 when he was 13. Two years later, he was becoming known as DJ Cool here. He often played the music at dance parties in the recreation room of the apartment complex where his family lived. Moving back and forth between two turntables, he focused on the instrumental portion or break in each record. In this way, he created music that his audiences loved to dance to. His technique of cutting and mixing records laid the foundation for hip hop. Along with Grand Master Flash, DJ Red Alert and others, he helped shape the direction of a musical style that would become one of the most influential movements in music. Remember that, Jamaican-born Clive Campbell. Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes, a singer, songwriter, and actor from Memphis, Tennessee, won an Academy Award for Best Original Song in 1971. He was the first African-American to win the award. Hayes wrote the winning tune, Theme from Shaft, for a movie directed by Gordon Parks, see page 59. He had written many, song, many hit songs before for many different artists. Hayes began his musical career playing piano, trombone, and saxophone for Stax Records. He won three Grammy Awards during his long career. 
He also acted in films on television shows such as Miami Vice and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hayes was introduced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002 and the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2005. Album of the Year. In 1974, Stevie Wonder was awarded the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Recognized for Inner Visions, he was the first African-American musician to win the honor. He has gone on to win Album of the Year two more times and has earned 25 Grammys in all. Admired around the globe, he has sold more than 100 million records worldwide. Blind since infancy, Stevelyn Hardaway Morris took the stage name Stevie Wonder when he was 11. He had just signed with the Motown Record Company, where he quickly became a popular hit maker. An inventive songwriter who plays many instruments, he is also a dedicated activist. He is credited with helping build support for the campaign to make Martin Luther King's birthday a national holiday. Rapper's Delight. In September uh, 1979, Sugar Hill Records released a song called Rapper's Delight, featuring three men reciting clever rhymes over a popular tune. It was the first rap song to become a national sensation. The performers were called the Sugar Hill Gang. The group included Michael Wonder Mike Wright, Henry Big Bank Hank Jackson, and Guy Master G. O'Brien. Sylvia Robinson, a former singer and president of the Sugar Hill record label, assembled the trio and gave them pre-written lyrics to the rap. Uh, to rap. Rapper's Delight was also popular overseas and was a hit in the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and other countries. More than 2 million copies were sold in the United States alone. First MacArthur. In 1981, Elma Lewis was the first African-American woman to be awarded a MacArthur Fellowship, the so-called Genius Grant. The awards are given at each the awards are given each year to exceptionally creative individuals. The MacArthur was just one of several hundred awards Lewis received for her work. An artist, educator, and community organizer, Lewis was born in Boston in 1921 after finishing college. She was determined to provide arts education to African Americans in Boston. Beginning in her own apartment, she founded the Elma Lewis School of Fine Arts. It grew into a nationally recognized program offering lessons in drama, dance, art, music, and costume design. Two years later, she founded the National Center of Afro American artists. In 1966, she created Playhouse in the Park, a summer theater program. In 1983, Presidential Ronald Reagan pres presented Lewis with a Presidential Medal for the Arts. We may have time to read half of another page. If I can get it turned, that was the end of page 75. We have to go to page 90 and we'll be finished with this book. The Thriller, Michael Jackson's Thriller was released on November the 30th, 1982. It set many records. On its way to becoming the best-selling album of all time, seven of the nine songs on Thriller reached the top 10 at one point. The album sold 1 million copies per week worldwide. It reached number one in almost every country where it was released, including Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, and Spain. Thriller won eight Grammys, including Album of the Year. To promote the title song, Jackson starred in a 14-minute music video. That video was selected for the National Film Registry, the first music video ever honored in that way. Thriller has now sold more than 100 million copies worldwide. Let's see if we have time for one more. Alice Walker. Alice Walker, winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1983, was the first African-American woman to win the honor. Her novel, The Color Purple, also won the National Book Award in 1983. By then, Walker had published several celebrated books, including three poetry collections, two novels, and two short story collections. Born in Putnam County, Georgia in 1944, 
Walker studied at Spelman College and Sarah Lawrence College in Brooksville, New York. She returned